Hey everybody, Jazzy here. I have been having a lot of fun playing as Wanda, the newest DLC character in Don't Starve Together. Now, I know that a lot of the early hype around Wanda was in regards to her incredible damage output at an older age. I was 100% a contributor to that. But today I want to focus on the other category of Wanda's main abilities, and that is her teleportation watches. Now, in Don't Starve Together, the ability to move around quickly is valued very highly. Speed modifiers change much of the basic challenge of the game, and many new biomes are judged pretty harshly based on their difficulty to access. With Wanda, these remote places can potentially be a single click away. So let's talk about these watches, which are going to fundamentally change the way we travel in the constant. Wanda actually comes with three separate grades of teleportation. On the smallest scale, there's the back step watch, which will throw her a few steps back along her previous path. After two seconds, you can use it again. The distance shortens as Wanda gets older, so an old Wanda will be making very short hops. It's not really an effective means of travel, even if you are trying to return back somewhere. Because of the cooldown, it usually makes more sense to just walk. Now, I'm not going to go into a ton of detail with this watch, because it's less for teleporting than it is for dodging. And it does have a couple of very useful niche uses, such as, you know, dodging attacks that you normally couldn't, such as projectiles. So I do want to cover those uses in a future video, but for now, let's just move on. The back trek watch needs to be prototyped at a Presta Hatitator. When first used, it will set a point in time. Then, using the watch will return you to that point and the watch gets an 8 minute cooldown. Extremely simple. Now, there are a few phenomenal aspects to this watch. The first is that it has no cost per use. Obviously, the startup cost of a walrus tusk and some thulacite is prohibitive, and you can only farm so many walruses per year. But once you make one, you can use it over and over again at zero cost, which makes it so much more economical than telelocating. Also unlike telelocating, the backtrack watch can carry you across shards from the overworld to the caves and vice versa. So with this tool alone, a Wanda with the proper resources can effectively create links to any part of the world, including parts that take a lot of time to travel to. I'm thinking about the ruins, the archives, the lunar island, Pearl's Island. Even with landmarks in the middle of the ocean, you could drop an anchor point on a boat. Just be careful, because if a boat moves away from that anchor point, then the next time you use the watch, you'll just drown. So one-way travel with this watch is fairly straightforward. Just set the anchor point and use it whenever. But how would we do two-way travel? Well, one method would be to travel around with two backtrack watches. Set one anchor point, travel to the next anchor point, and set that one. Then, whenever you want to travel, just bring both watches, use one, do your business, and then use the other. However, there's another way that won't require us to carry around backtrack watches. And the trick here lies in the fact that you can use watches stored inside containers. This gives the benefit of leaving the watch behind when you travel, so they can sit inside of chests at waypoints throughout your world and serve as, you know, little travel buttons to whatever destination you want. And if you want to change the anchor point, just use some clockmaker tools on a watch to disassemble it, get all the ingredients back, then recraft into a new watch. Back on my Warly world, a viewer helped me to organize my food bundles with mini signs inside of chests. And the same concept can be applied to labeling backtrack watches. Let's say you want a central hub containing links to different parts of your world. You could load six watches into a scaled chest, and there would be six additional slots for items that can be used to label these watches. For example, a watch to the archive could be labeled with a distilled knowledge. The Lunar Island label could be a piece of moon glass, ruins could be thulacite, Pearl's Island could be a shell bell, and the portal could be portal paraphernalia. Ancient Guardian could be a bat bat that you find in the labyrinth, the atrium could be a fossil fragment or nightmare fuel. Then at each destination you could set up return hubs containing a single backtrack watch that you activate to go home. Or you could just set up mini networks of watches for conveniently traveling to, you know, different parts of a base or separate branches of the ruins. Hell, you could go on a day-long mushroom spree by teleporting between each of the three mushroom biomes to pick them at the respective times of day. I know I really like mushrooms, but you get the idea, right? Now the rift watch is one tier higher than the backtrack watch. 
It can be prototyped at a Presta Hattitator, but you can also make one just by socketing a purple gem into a backtrack watch. This watch needs an anchor point set in exactly the same way. When activated, the Rift watch opens a rift for 10 seconds for anyone to jump through, returning them back to the anchor location. It will then revert to a backtrack watch on an 8 minute cooldown. For the cost of a single purple gem, Wanda's entire crew can travel through space time alongside her. Lazy deserters are still cheaper to use, although one player does need to be on the receiving side. You can leave the used rift watches in a chest and just re-socket it with another purple gem next time you want to teleport from there. Now you may be asking yourself, why would I use a rift watch if I'm playing solo? Can't I just teleport myself around with a backtrack watch? So yeah, obviously the big benefit is being able to transport non-wandas this way. But there is in fact another benefit to opening a rift. Wanda can carry statues through rifts, making the Rift Watch now the fastest way to transport suspicious marble pieces, celestial altar pieces, giant crops, and antlion boulders. Want some decorative pumpkins at your pseudoscience station, but want to avoid the judgmental stares of your beefalo during, you know, a forced march through a field of insane monkeys? Well, now's your chance. The Rift Watch is gonna make assembling the suspicious marble pieces a dream. Just set an anchor point at the set piece and open a rift whenever you find a broken piece. How about assembling the mysterious energy? Open up a rift to the lunar island and deliver your celestial tribute straight into the open arms of a moon fissure. Do you see how much travel time Wanda is going to save? I mean, it boggles the mind how powerful her teleportation will be. After a few winters and a bit of ruins clearing, you will have the means to make dozens of these watches and will find yourself with immediate access to practically every part of the world. This will obviously be beneficial to mega basers who want to get around their base as quickly as possible, you know, to deliver items and pick up other supplies, but it also opens up some unique options for early game speedrunning. Being able to travel long distances, including with statues, is going to save an ungodly amount of precious travel time in the early game. Of all the character perks, Wanda's teleportation abilities to me are hands down the most significant, and the benefits of these watches are undoubtedly going to reshape the meta of Don't Starve Together. I'm absolutely planning to play my next mega base world as Wanda. She is is such an unbelievably strong and balanced character, and in the late game, her perks are going to shine like the glint of a polished watch. Thanks for watching! Let me know what you think of all these abilities, and how would you set up your world for fast travel with Wanda. But yeah, enjoy the new character, and see you next time!